Hello, uh, my name is Walter Nagus Darge. I am uh, associate professor at the Technische Universität uh, Dresden. Uh, I'm responsible for the uh, lecture wireless sensor networks uh, this summer 2020. In this uh, session, I will introduce the entire uh, lecture and uh, briefly summarize each chapters. We have altogether seven uh, chapters. But before we uh, discuss the chapters, I will give you some preliminary information which are uh, very important uh, for you to successfully complete this uh, lecture. Uh, all the slides are available online on my website as well as on the um, courses website at the university so you can always go and uh, freely download and uh, use them as your study materials. Uh, the lecture is based on two books, uh, one of them I co-authored and uh, the other I uh, uh, myself uh, wrote. Uh, the first one is Fundamentals of Wireless Sensor Networks and the second one uh, is uh, principle, Principles and Applications of uh, Ubiquitous uh, Sensing. Uh, both books are available or, uh, digitally on our, or digitally as well as uh, hard copy um, at the library, so you can uh, borrow them. Uh, the lecture consists of two parts, a theoretical part and a seminar uh, part. The, for the seminar part, I will um, upload a list of uh, research papers. Uh, you will have to choose uh, one of these papers. You can make up to three uh, papers, but assignment will be given on a first come first uh, given basis. Uh, the, the, your responsibility is to read one research uh, paper on wireless sensor uh, networks, uh, summarize this uh, paper and submit a, a one-page uh, summary. Uh, parallel to it, you have to prepare a PowerPoint slides and give presentation about this uh, paper to the group. Uh, the uh, duration for the presentation is maximum of 20 uh, minutes. Uh, Participation in the seminar is mandatory. You have to be able to successfully complete uh, your assignment in order to be eligible to sit uh, to the written exams. Uh, without this prerequisite, it's not possible to uh, sit to the uh, written exam. The lecture is uh, again, organized into two building uh, blocks. Uh, the first block uh, refers to a wireless sensor node, and the second block refers to a wireless sensor network. We have three chapters for the first group. Here, uh, we discuss about the architecture of a wireless sensor node, uh, the selection and integration of sensors in the in a wireless sensor node and um, special operating systems for wireless sensor network. Once we have completed these three chapters and we know how a wireless sensor node uh, functions, uh, having a capacity to sense uh, physical uh, process, uh, process this data and communicate the data wirelessly um, to a remote base station. For the third aspect, the network uh, is capable to set up uh, a wireless sensor network. Uh, the node is capable of setting up a wireless sensor network in collaboration with other sensor nodes. 
Then the second uh, part of the lecture, uh, which focuses on the networking aspect, uh, has also three chapters. These three chapters are essential for setting up a network. The first chapter deals with point-to-point uh, -point communication. Here we discuss about algorithms and protocols we need uh, to uh, successfully establish a link, a direct link between two uh, devices. So here we discuss about the transmitter, the channel, and the um, receiver. Then we briefly discuss about uh, the protocols we need uh, to share a wireless media. This is the responsibility of the MAC layer, and the network layer is responsible for uh, establishing multi-hop uh, communication and uh, packet uh, forward. Uh, to go uh, uh, to discuss in more detail, uh, a wireless sensor node is the essential element of a wireless sensor network. Without the existence of a node, there will be no wireless sensor network. Again, a node uh, has the capacity to integrate two or more uh, sensors, which interface the network with, uh, with the physical uh, wallet. So a node has the capacity to sense, uh, process the data, to communicate the data wirelessly, to manage power so that the nodes uh, have a long uh, life. And in some, according to the requirements of the application for which we deploy the wireless sensor network, uh, additional components uh, can be uh, incorporated. For example, synchronized time synchronization component, uh, security components, and uh, localization components. Uh, this is a brief. Uh, overview of how the different components of a wireless sensor node are organized. So here we have the sensing subsystem integrating uh, one or more sensors. Uh, we have an actuation subsystem in case we want to act, we want the sensor to act on the environment. Um, we have the processing subsystem which is responsible for data processing, for uh, creating uh, packet, network packets, and transmitting these packets over a wireless uh, um, link for data aggregation uh, and other tasks. We have the power management subsystem, which is responsible to make sure that all the components are supplied with the necessary amount of power, but at the same time, it's responsible to make sure that power is not consumed um, inefficiently. So when components are idle, for example, the power subsystem shuts them down and when they are needed, it, is, um, it turns them uh, up on time. The communication subsystem is responsible to gate a data stream, change this data stream into packets, and then transfer these packets um, over a wireless link. And also it's responsible for receiving packets, uh, sending acknowledgements, um, and also managing the radio chip as well, because the radio chip is the most energy consuming components of a wireless sensor node. So it has its own power management subsystem to make sure that the radio component is utilizing power efficiently. And then here an example of a security subsystem is introduced to make sure that um, the data integrity uh, coming from a sensor node or going uh, uh, from a sensor node is not compromised. Uh, here is an example how a wireless sensor node uh, looks like. As you can see, there are so many uh, components. Not all of them are essential components. Uh, which components are necessary depends on the application again. We're going to see in more detail different types of applications for wireless sensor network in the upcoming chapter. Uh, so the 
number of components a wireless sensor node should integrate depends on this uh, requirement. For our case, for example, here we have a vibration sensor, temperature sensor, humidity sensor, um, pressure sensor uh, integrated in this simple sensor node. Uh, here I have given you different types of uh, sensor architecture, uh, node architecture. Uh, this is also the focus of our search chapter. Uh, which architecture is uh, optimal? Again, depends on the requirements of the, the application and also the, the uh, lifetime of the network. If the network is uh, to be deployed uh, for a short period of time, then we may not need a large batteries. But if the network is to be deployed for a long period of time, then uh, the power should be sufficient to, uh, for the network to last that long, in which case uh, we might be required to integrate uh, bigger batteries, which uh, are the result of which the size of the uh, sensor node is affected. Okay, having seen uh, or having uh, an overview of a wireless sensor node. The next step is to bring together these sensor nodes to uh, set up a wireless uh, sensor network. Uh, the internet interfaces uh, human beings with the virtual world, uh, thereby giving them almost inexhaustible uh, opportunity uh, to access information from all corners of the world and imagine we could also be able to set up uh, a sensor network so that we can have access um, to the physical world. This uh, would mean of course we can augment our percept uh, perception capacity and also our capacity to control the environment hopefully uh, for Good. Uh, so wireless sensor uh, networks are uh, and networks which embed a large number of uh, sens uh, sensor nodes in the environment so that we uh, can interact with the uh, physical environment remotely. Uh, the devices are highly intelligent. They can self-organize. Uh, they can decide, uh, they collaborate with one another to, uh, 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 for in-network processing. That means they can um, collaborate with each other to aggregate data, to compute uh, simple um, operations such as uh, you know, determining the mean temperature, the maximum temperature, the variances of temperature, uh, and many other uh, tasks. Uh, when the uh, network is established, again, the nodes can autonomously communicate with one another. In case nodes fail or exhaust their uh, uh, batteries or some nodes are stolen or defect for whatever reason, the node should be able to uh, quickly understand what is going on and should be able to uh, mend uh, the defect or um, reorganize so that there is a well-connected network at all time. Here is an example of a wireless sensor network consisting of uh, about 34 sensor nodes. The different colors uh, you, you see are uh, packet propagation uh, routes. Uh, which route is necessary and which route is optimal will be discussed in the networking uh, chapter. Uh, okay, once we have seen uh, what a sensor node is and how a wireless sensor uh, network come to uh, life, the next step is to discuss the different applications of wireless sensor networks. I have uh, identified uh, these applications you see in front of you uh, as an example, but wireless sensor networks have a large number of applications. Uh, 
But in order to um, motivate and illustrate with some examples, uh, I have uh, selected a hand flosser. This deals with structural health monitoring. Structural health monitoring uh, deals with the inspection of complex structures such as big buildings and uh, bridges. Uh, the integrity of these structures has uh, to be uh, monitored on a regular basis uh, so that we can uh, predict damage on time and uh, remove the, the damage before uh, it um, causes significant loss uh, in terms of different monetary as well as human life. Traffic monitoring deals with uh, managing uh, congestion in urban uh, uh, areas uh, by predicting uh, traffic flow, uh, presence and speed of cars, and uh, providing alternative uh, routes for drivers. In healthcare, especially telemedicine, uh, wireless sensor networks have a large um, a number of uh, applications. Essentially, uh, we can set up a body area network consisting of different types of sensors, and these sensors can sense different types of biophysical uh, phenomenon, uh, process the data locally, uh, and then pack this data into packets and send it to a remote doctor or a health assistant so that people's health can be uh, diagnosed and monitored remotely. Another application we deal with is uh, pipeline monitoring. Uh, pipelines are essential uh, building blocks of uh, modern life. Uh, our waters, our uh, uh, energy, uh, water, gas, uh, and other types of uh, fluids are transported uh, using uh, pipelines, but pipelines are all, uh, um, vulnerable uh, for uh, leak, leakage. So we need to uh, detect leakage uh, and then identify the uh, leakage on, on time. Uh, we uh, should also uh, monitor uh, pressure in, in, in pipelines to make sure that uh, leakage or uh, ad, uh, other types of damage are overcome on time. Here we can use uh, different types of sensors such as force sensors, uh, pressure sensors, um, pH sensors to uh, monitor the quality of the fluid flowing through the, um, the pipe and avoid contamination. We can use ultrasound sensors and uh, infrared sensors. Uh, we will see uh, how we can uh, monitor pipelines in more detail when we discuss about uh, applications of sensor networks. Uh, another application I picked up is precision agriculture. Uh, here we are concerned with uh, managing uh, different types of resources in a large scale farm such as uh, you know, coffee farm, uh, orange farm, apple farm, and different types of large scale farms where we need to monitor the administration of um, pesticides, fungicides, uh, fertilizers, and even water, uh, where yield has to be uh, predicted on time, supply chain has to be uh, organized uh, in an efficient way. Uh, here we have a good application for wireless sensor networks. Another application is underground mining, but we will not be able to uh, discuss underground mining here in more detail, but uh, there also the safety of miners and the safety of mines is um, a great concern in underground uh, mining. Uh, we can use a, a network of uh, 3D cameras and high sensitive uh, acoustic sensors to uh, sense the, the, the quality of air, the quality of uh, uh, working environment, the presence and absence of uh, people as well as uh, tools uh, to ensure that um, 
workers have a very good working uh, environment. And in case explosions happen or uh, miners are trapped, uh, again, we can use different types of sensors uh, for this task. Okay, having discussed the uh, different types of application, now we uh, come to the two building uh, blocks. Uh, the first block, as I told you, refers to the node architecture. The second block refers to the network. In the node block, uh, the architecture deals with how the different components of a wireless sensor node should be designed how we can choose hardware subsystems, how we interconnect these hardware subsystems, and um, how the signal should be uh, conditioned so that by the time it reaches the processing subsystem, uh, it can be processed uh, efficiently. Uh, again, in the architecture part, the selection of the sensors is important, the selection of the, 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 the processing subsystem is important, the selection of the radio subsystem is important, the identification of serial buses to interconnect the different components is important, so we will do this in more detail in this chapter. The uh, second chapter in the first part of the lecture is sensor selection and uh, integration. The quality of data we extract from uh, physical environments depends on the quality of the sensors uh, and also how these sensors are integrated uh, into the whole uh, sensor node because the sensor node has uh, consists of other uh, components which could generate heat when they uh, process, and this heat may also affect the, the uh, quality of the uh, data sensed by the, the, the sensor. So we need to know uh, where to place the, the sensors and how to shield the sensors from uh, unnecessary uh, heat dissipation coming from either the radio subsystem or the uh, processing subsystem. So it is important to understand about precision and uh, accuracy, uh, sensor sensitivity, reproducibility, the sensing span, the resolution of the sensor, the selectivity of the sensor. Here uh, we are mainly concerned with the design of the uh, ampli amplification and uh, conditioning subsystem to make sure that only the desired physical process is uh, sensed. Uh, response time is important and uh, self-heating uh, is another problem because the sensor itself uh, converts one form of energy into another form of energy and during this conversion um, heat dissipation is produced and this heat dissipation may also affect the performance of the sensor. So we need to understand how to deal with uh, heat dissipation. Once we are done with this uh, chapter, the third chapter is uh, operating systems. Uh, again, the, uh, a sensor node consists of different types of uh, resources. Uh, these resources have to be shared by um, different types of applications and different types of uh, local services. Uh, we have a routing service, uh, routing protocols, uh, we have uh, mark layer services, uh, we have the application itself, and they all want to uh, take hold of uh, the different hardware system and there has to be some management. Uh, so here we are interested in special purpose uh, operating systems, uh, mostly event-based operating system which are extremely efficient, their power and resource requirement is uh, modest as compared to the requirement of other types of um, general purpose uh, operating systems. Uh, specifically, we are interested in uh, considering both functional and non-functional aspect, especially non-functional uh, aspect, because the non-functional aspect determine how good is, uh, or how suitable a wireless sensor um, operating system is for a specific uh, task. And then we will see uh, different types of prototypes. So with this, we will come to the uh, 
you know, the conclusion of the first part. And once we have all these essential uh, building blocks in place, now the node is ready to set up the wireless sensor network. First by interacting with other nodes, and then sec uh, by supporting uh, multi-hop uh, communication. So the second part begins with the physical layer. As I uh, mentioned, the physical layer is responsible for establishing a direct link uh, between two uh, sensor nodes. Uh, it is also called a point-to-point -point, uh, communication. Here, we have three main building blocks. We have the transmitter, we have the receiver, and we have the channel. The transmitter is uh, responsible for generating the data to be communicated and preparing this data so that it can propagate wirelessly and can be detected using simple antenna. The channel, uh, we need to understand the channel because the channel may affect the signal in a different way. It may uh, introduce its own uh, noise, uh, by way of adding it or superimposing it on the signal or it may attenuate the signal which means it uh, removes some uh, information from from uh, the signal or it may do both at the same time so we need to know how to deal with this type of uh, problems then we have the receiver the receiver should be able to detect the signal should isolate the noise from from it and amplify the signal, demodulate the signal, decode and encode uh, 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 the different uh, redundant information we deliberately introduced to deal with uh, noise. And then uh, because we are dealing with uh, digital communication, of course we will uh, discuss about source encoding, channel encoding, uh, and some uh, demodul uh, modulation, demodulation, and signal process uh, propagation aspects. Once we are done with point-to-point uh, -point communication, the uh, second uh, aspect in the second part of the lecture is a medium access uh, control uh, protocol. Here, our main goal is to ensure that uh, two or more sensor nodes can share a common wireless uh, medium uh, fairly. That means if all of them want to uh, communicate, there should be no interference and no specific sensor node should overutilize the, the channel. So the medium access control protocol ensures that all nodes share the medium in a fair way and uh, by avoiding collision of packets and by uh, making sure that uh, nodes can manage you know the sharing of the wireless medium in a distributed uh, way uh, here we are uh, interested in dealing with the schedule based uh, power uh, mac protocols contention based mac protocol and hybrid mac uh, protocols Again, uh, similar with the operating systems, here also our main focus is not on um, general purpose medium access control protocols, rather on uh, low power uh, medium access protocols. What do we mean by that? Uh, remember the radio subsystem is the one which most utilizes uh, energy because communication is uh, cost intensive. If the uh, nodes are not communicating with any other nodes, then we should be able to switch off the radio uh, subsystem. And this assignment specifically is the assignment of the MAC layer protocols. So here we're going to see how power aware MAC protocols enable the efficient utilization of uh, energy and wireless sensor networks. So once we manage to uh, enable nodes, share a common medium, the last chapter in this lecture will be uh, about networking. 
networking in, in, in the context of wireless communication simply means supporting multi-hop communication. If two nodes for some reason are not able to communicate directly, then they have to involve a third node to forward packets between, the, between them. And this is the minimum requirement for setting up a network. There are two practical reasons why we need a network in wireless sensor network. If two nodes want to communicate, and, but if they are far away from one another and their communication range does not allow them to communicate, then we have to uh, add an intermediate node which receives packet and forwards this packet to the other node. But sometimes, even if it were theoretically possible for these nodes to communicate directly, we may still prefer to include a third uh, sen sensor node, uh, mainly to uh, reduce the energy cost of communication. Because the longer the distance between two nodes, the more probable it is uh, for the packet to suffer interference and um, uh, multipath uh, scattering. This means uh, there is a high prob probability that the packet may not be able to um, receive successfully. And then retransmission costs energy. So to make sure that there is a reliable communication we still include intermediate nodes for, uh, for this purpose. So in this uh, chapter, we're going to see uh, network topology. I will show you briefly uh, why a network uh, topology is relevant. We will see how we can define routes, uh, what type of metrics are necessary to define routes. We will classify routes based on uh, different types of uh, cost metrics and finally we will discuss a few selected routing protocols which are um, used quite often in wireless sensor uh, networks. In wireless sensor networks we deal mainly uh, with two type of uh, network structures or network topologies. The first one which you see here is the flat topology network. In a flat topology network, all nodes are equal. All nodes play the same roles and there is no hierarchy. And nodes communicate with one another as the demand arises. As such, routes are also discovered and used on demand. Here you see there are different types of routes and these routes will be discovered on demand. When nodes go and when nodes come, this route will be redefined. A, uh, will be uh, redefined. Flat topology networks are highly elastic uh, because nodes discover each other by flooding the network with a discovery uh, packets, by flooding or by gossiping. Uh, but for long-term deployment, flat topology networks are not very uh, efficient because uh, if, for example, two remote nodes wish to communicate with one another, then this new, uh, route has to be first uh, defined and then communication takes place. The one on the right side uh, for me, you see is a hierarchical topology. Here, nodes have a strict hierarchy of communication. Some nodes are supposed to be child nodes and other nodes are cluster nodes. We set up the, the hierarchy of communication before any communication takes place. And when the demand arises, then nodes know uh, which is their parent and then they transfer packet only to this uh, parent. So there are some nodes which are called uh, cluster heads and there are other nodes which are called uh, uh, child nodes. 
the cost of establishing this type of network is very high, but once the network is established, communication is fast. So we're going to see uh, both the merit and demerits of this type of topologies and what type of protocols are available for this type of technologies. By this, I come to the conclusion of my introductory chapter. I hope you have a brief overview of wireless sensor networks and what they consist of, both uh, in terms of hardware, software, and uh, protocol. Uh, in the next session, we will uh, deal with applications of wireless sensor networks in more uh, detail. Uh, I hope this uh, is uh, sufficient for you. If you need additional information, uh, please refer, uh, refer to the two books I uh, mentioned in, in the beginning of this uh, session. I'll see you next uh, in the next session. Uh, goodbye.